Hi, welcome back to AP Chemistry. You're here with Mrs. Mays, and we're going to take our time to work through some examples of solving equilibrium problems where um, every situation is going to be a little bit different. So we'll work through each individual thing on individual podcasts. Please get your calculator out, turn it on. Get, I'm going to show you how to use your solver, so you need to have your calculator with you so you can follow along. Um, I'm using a TI-84. If your calculator is a little bit different, don't worry, we'll figure it out. Uh, I bet uh, you can bring it to me and I'll help you find what buttons to push. So the first thing we need to do is start with a balanced chemical equation. Then we'll write down the amounts of whatever they give us, products or reactants, in what's called a rice table. Then we shift the equilibrium by adding or subtracting x to either side of the reaction. And we'll use x for some amount of moles that we just don't know what it is yet. And then we solve for x using the solver function on your graphing calculator. Sometimes the equations have to be solved in reverse, so be patient and work it through, think through every situation on its own and decide what's the best placement for x in our rice table. If a problem gives us both the initial and the equilibrium concentrations, then they've made it easy for us. We determine, we determine the amount of change from one to the other and apply it stoichiometrically to all the other species. And if your equilibrium conditions are not given, then we will simply use algebra to predict what they should be in an ideal situation. Like if the reaction actually goes the way we think it's going to go. Sometimes we have to use the quadratic equation or even cubic equations to solve for x if there's a significant change in the values at equilibrium. Remember, the most important thing is to use only equilibrium values to calculate your equilibrium constant. So we will never put in just any old value, always the equilibrium value. So now that you know our approach, let's look at an example. In this first example, when the equilibrium constant is very low and we use the solver to solve the problem, actually I'm going to show you how to use the solver and how to use what's called the small x assumption. We'll do it both ways for this one. So the value of the equilibrium constant for the following reaction is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5. And I think we can all agree that this is a very, very small number. So if, if the equilibrium constant is, what do we have, H2 times F2 over HF squared. And the number is really, really small, then the assumption is that we will not be making very much product because our numerator is really, really tiny. That's how we get such small numbers. So we know this reaction is hardly going to go forward at all. Let's say we're given a concentration for HF equal to 2 molar. We're asked to find the final concentrations of all the species once equilibrium is established. So we're going to use a rice table to set up what's going on, to keep us organized. The first thing we do is put our reaction down there. So I have 2HF, and then here's my equilibrium arrow, so no numbers are going into this column. Then I have H2 hydrogen plus F2 fluorine, diatomic of course. All right, we were given an initial value of 2 molar HF. We're starting with no reactants because the reaction hasn't proceeded. We haven't made any of those yet. I know that I'm going to make some product, but for every 1 H2 that I make, I have to lose 2 HFs to do it. So I'm going to put a minus 2x here. 
I'm not sure how much stuff it is, but I know I lose twice as much of the HF as what I gain for H2. Now the stoichiometry is one to one comparing H, uh, H2 and F2. So whatever I gain in hydrogen, I will gain the same amount in fluorine. That's what the mole ratio says. So now my equilibrium is simply found by taking the initial and the change and adding them together. So 2.0 minus 2x gives me the equilibrium value for HF. 0 plus x is just x here and 0 plus x gives us x there. Next we're going to put this into our KC expression. The expression says we take H2 times F2 and divide the whole thing by the concentration of HF squared. And that will give us a number equal to 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5. All right, but we don't know what the equilibrium concentrations are, so we're going to have to substitute x in there. So I'll put x in the place of H2. I will also put x in the place of F2 in the expression. And HF is 2 minus 2x, which reduces to x squared over 2 because we're saying that x is very small. So even if I double it, 2 minus 2x is still essentially equal to 2. Because 2 minus a really, 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 really small number is still just basically equal to 2. So if I'm using the small x assumption, anytime I add or subtract x, I can remove it from my expression. I can't do it when I'm multiplying x because multiplying numbers makes a bigger difference than adding them or subtracting them. So now I can use simple algebra. If x squared is e x squared over 2 is equal to Sorry, let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, so if x squared over 2 is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5, then that means that x squared is equal to 3 times 10 to the negative 5. And when I take the square root of both sides, I can solve for x. So let's use our calculator and find out what is the square root 3 times 10 to the negative 5. Remember to use the scientific notation function in your calculator. Don't use the little hat times 10 to the something. That's not going to get you the right results. Okay, so I found that x is equal to 0 0.005477. I get to keep two sig figs, so we'll call that 55. Five. And of course that's in molar concentration. So keep that in mind. Recall what we got for the value of x. Of course we can rewind and see. And I've got it written down for mine. Oh, no I don't, but I'm about to x is 0 0.0055 molar. So now let's see what we get when we use the solver. So I'll walk you through the steps and then we'll put our numbers in. So the first thing that we do is in your calculator go to math and then choose option zero for your equation solver. It might not be zero in your calculator anymore. Um, just check to see um, solver or equation solver. And if you have to, you should clear it out so there's nothing there and rewrite your equilibrium expression equation so that it is set equal to zero. This is important, it won't work if it's equal to the equilibrium constant. We have to move things around. So I took our equilibrium expression that we had from the reaction before and I put zero on one side and moved everything else over. Watch out for signs when you do this because if you're adding on one side you have to subtract on the other. Now we're going to type it into the calculator exactly as it is. 
type it in using the X button, the um, alphabet X button. It's right next to the button on my calculator that says alpha. So let me do that. Let's go through these steps so far and see where we're at. So first I need to find my math button. There it is. And then my choice zero is usually my solver. I'm going to arrow down just to make sure that's what it is. Oh, I would have gotten it wrong. Now it's my choice B. It used to be choice zero on my 83. So choice B is my solver. So I select that one. And I'm going to type my equation in exactly as I have it here. So 1.5 EX, no, E to the, what is it, minus 5, negative 5. Don't use the subtract to put a minus sign in somewhere. Then after that I have parentheses 2 minus 2 and then I'm using the X button here that puts a variable in there not um, not the alphabet X. I lied. Sorry. Then close that parentheses and that one is squared so we have to square that quantity. Then I subtract an x squared, so I go back to my variable button, x squared, that's equal to zero, and I think I'm okay. Hmm, interesting. Okay, next when we hit enter, we have to type in an assumption for x. Hey, that worked. I wonder if I don't have to rearrange it to make it zero anymore. That would be nifty. Maybe somebody can try that out. Just put our expression in exactly how it looks. Okay, so after I pushed enter, then I was given the option to type in some assumption for what x equals. Because your calculator use a, uses a guess and check algorithm, and we don't want to get a negative concentration in our quadratic formula, so we're going to choose about 1% of the initial concentration. So I'm going to type in my guess for x to be about 0 0.02. It doesn't matter, you could put in 0 0.01 or whatever, but I just always do 1% of my starting concentration. So 0 0.02 is my starting place for guess and check. Now, be careful. Don't just hit solve. When you're using the solver, we don't just hit enter. We're going to push alpha and then solve on the calculator because that tells it to evaluate the quadratic equation for the value of x. Not just to do a simple math operation, but to actually come up with a value for x. So on my calculator I push alpha, enter, because that's where it says solve. So now I have a value for x equal to 0 0.007686. And that's not exactly equal to what we had before, but it's pretty close, like it's within a few percents. So first we quit out of the solver and solve for the equilibrium conditions. So remember, HF, our concentration of HF, we said would be 2 minus 2x. The calculator will remember what the value of x is. So you don't have to uh, type in the number that we got. You just type in 2 minus 2x. Let me show you what that's going to look like. So quit out of the solver. Then we type in 2 minus 2, then go get your variable x, push enter, and there's your concentration of HF, 1.98 molar. Great. Then the value of H2 and F2 were simply x. In our equilibrium expression, um, the equilibrium in our rice table, the equilibrium concentration was just x for both of these. So that's the 0 0.007 molar that our calculator solved for. And of course we could have used the small x assumption which was close to 
0.006 molar. So we're not really off by that much. So when you use the solver in your calculator, be sure that you're letting your reader know that you use the solver instead of the small x. Um, don't assume that your test reader understands the steps that you took to determine the value of x. When you do, they're going to know how to adjust their grading to match the technique that you used. All right, well, that's it for the example one, the part one. In our next podcast, we'll look at a different example where the value of k is different from the one we just did. In this one, it was really, really low. Next, we're going to look at one where it's kind of in the middle. All right, see you soon.